years, I want to introduce Kia Comedy. Uh, Kia Barnes is an advocate and a for equality and diversity within the LGBTQ plus community and a repertoire includes event production, education, entertainment, social media, influencing. A former teacher and Fulbright researcher, Kia was appointed to Atlanta Public Schools LGBTQ Task Force where she chairs its curriculum and policy board. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms also selected Kia to sit on the city's first ever LGBTQ advisory board. Having left the classroom in 2014 to pursue a career in stand-up comedy, Kia has performed on stages across the country and has been featured on, on Netflix, BET, LOL, Network, NBC, and more. She's collaborated to cultivate queer safe spaces with numerous LGBTQ organizations and events, including, including the Human Rights Campaign, Georgia Equality, Atlanta Pride, Pride Lines Miami, uh, Selexicon Las Vegas, Women of Color Weekend, Sister Space, and the list continues to grow, including Out Georgia Business Alliance. Kia also produces two nationally touring LGBTQ engagements, the Les Laugh Comedy Show and Andrew Fashion Show. And she was instrumental in producing Atlanta's first Equality March in commemoration of the Pulse Orlando tragedy. Simply put, Kia Comedy Barnes is just not jokes. And I'm so honored to have Kia here with us this evening. Hey, Kia, how you doing? Oh, I think we've got to unmute you here. All right. Hey, Kia. All right, can you hear me now? We can. How are you this evening? I was starting to feel like a Zoom meme. Um, <laughs> so excited to be here. Thank you for that awesome introduction. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm doing something right in Atlanta. Um, and, and thank you to everybody for tapping in and for all the work that you all do and for all the opportunities that you all continue to create for uh, Atlanta and the surrounding area. I was scrolling through looking at everyone's little brief bio. I see that we have Disney here. I don't know if it's that Disney, but if it is, I want you to remember this face. Um, but just, I, I see so many creators. I think it was a handy entertainment. That one caught my eye as well. Like you guys are really doing it. So I'm so excited to get the opportunity to present with you all um, and bring up this panel, um, especially in Atlanta, because Atlanta to me is like the black gay Mecca of the South. And it's so beautiful to me because I'm from Alabama. I didn't see anybody checking in from Alabama. If you're from Alabama, just drop a quick little one so I won't feel like I'm by myself and escaping to freedom land. But just really excited to be here um, because it was a culture shock for me when I first moved here. I remember um, riding up and down one of these 50 different Peachtree streets with my brother and he just kept looking around and around and he looked so confused. And I finally said like, hey, like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And he said, Kia, you know, I don't have any problem with the gays, but Atlanta is just too gay. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, it seems like y'all have gay pride rainbow flags posted up on every other corner. And he pointed to the flag and I said, dude, that is Marta. And I know I'm not by myself here. I know somebody else was confused by that rainbow flag, but they are everywhere. And um, that's why I love Atlanta so much. I really just feel like I get to be free here. Like I came to Atlanta and I joined a gay mega church. It's a real life thing. I know, I know you all have seen them. We have visions, we have victory. Um, and it, it was again, just a culture shock to me. Like I was so surprised by the life in the building. Like the pastor, he was all jazzed up. He had sequins on his robe, read from the book of Elton John. The choir had choreography, just up there voguing it out. I love Atlanta. Atlanta is life to me. Um, and I just feel like I get to be so free here. I get to be a creative here. I get to be uh, androgynous here because there will always be a part of me that wants to be treated like a lady. And that part no normally comes out right around the end of dinner time, right along with the chick. Yes, I will be sitting right across from you at the table like, you got this daddy. I love it, only in Atlanta. Um, so again, just so excited to be working with the Out Georgia Business Alliance and all of the things that you all are able to do um, and as well as sitting on the advisory board 
and working with the Atlanta Public Schools LGBTQ Task Force. That's been so amazing to me because I was an educator for years and years and years. And um, I first started teaching in Alabama and then I moved to Georgia and still lived under that same fear that if I was out it, I could be fired. Like, what will this be for my career? And it actually did end up being the uh, end of my career as an educator. I was discriminated against. So like, what a pleasure and an honor to now be able to sit on this board with Atlanta Public Schools and literally be in a, a position to rewrite the policies that I used to literally cry about. Atlanta is, is opportunity and growth. And, and you all play such a huge part in that um, because I know 2020 has been very tumultuous. Uh, it was for many of us. And the, the growth that we've seen in Georgia flipping and turning the state blue, can we just drop a one in the chat if you voted? Just one, just drop a one in the chat if you voted. We're in here, in here, in here. We all, hey, I see it. I see it. We all, looks like we all played our part. We got a couple ones. What more, what more progress could we ask for? Um, and I think that's what we're gonna, uh, I'm really excited to get to discuss with our awesome panel that we have today, especially you, Kim Jackson. I got some questions for you. Um, yeah, am I, am I running long? Am I running long, Chris? No, I, I, I'm just like so excited as you're mentioning Kim Jackson and getting to the next panel and, and everything that you're bringing to the cable, Kia, is, is so inspiring. I know this is the first time that, that we're you know, officially working together and I'm, I'm excited. We've, we've already started to talk about our community awards event out in the fall um, and, and tapping into Kia, Kia Comedy, uh, bringing it to the table. Um, I'm just so honored. And, and I know I definitely wanna get to, let's start inviting this panel on because I, I want you to start asking them questions because we've got these amazing folks that represent the political space, our nonprofit space and our new business space. Is it okay if I start introducing those folks? Absolutely, Heck I'm yeah. ready for it, let's do it. Thank you oh, for the time though. Hey. And thank you everybody for listening and tapping in. I love telling my stories. Absolutely, Kia. Um, it is just an honor to have you. So I wanna welcome in, Kia is gonna help us moderate this next panel here. Um, we've got Mary Ann Adams, who is the founder and executive director of ZAMI Nobla, the National Organization of Black Lesbians on Aging, dedicated to building a national base of power for Black Lesbians 40 plus, centering service, advocacy, and community action research. Mary Ann has a master's degree in social work with a concentration in community partnerships and over 25 years of uh, experience in public health, social work and education, community engagement, capacity building, group facilitation, outreach, recruitment, planning, you name it, she's done it. Her interests are in investigating the social determinants of racial and sexual minority health inequities. And she's a commissioner with the East Point Housing Authority and currently serves as commission chair. We wanna welcome Marianne Ad Adams to the house. Hey, Marianne, how are you? And we're gonna ask to unmute Marianne. And then I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Kim Jackson. So we're so honored to have Kim Jackson in the house. Georgia State Senator Kim Jackson serves Georgia State Senate District 41, representing portions of DeKalb and Gwinnett counties. Kim works every day to build a safer, fairer, and more prosperous Georgia, and brings the diverse voices of her district to the capital, immigrants, refugees, and people living on the margins. An Episcopal priest from the rural South, Kim made Georgia home over a decade ago. After graduating from Furman University, Kim volunteered as an EMT and led her colleagues at Emory Can Emory's Candler School of Theology to advocate for criminal justice reform in Georgia. Upon receiving her Master's of Divinity, Kim commenced her Evocation, our vocation as an Episcopal priest. Over the past 10 years in ministry, she has served as a college chaplain, a nationally renowned consultant and preacher, and a per, per, parish priest. As a vicar of the Church of the Common Crown, Kim co-creates churches with people who are experiencing homelessness in downtown Atlanta. We're so honored to have Kim Jackson in the house. We're gonna ask you to unmute as well. And hey, Kim, how are you? Hey, it's good to be here. Great to have you. And I want to introduce our next guest, Justin Cullifer. 
Justin is a serial inventor and entrepreneur with a proven track record with digital product design and development. He's the founder of Glasshouse Guide and Alexa real estate tour platform and founder of APG Emerging Tech, a consulting firm helping others build new and original technologies. And I want to mention that Justin Culliford's Glasshouse Guide was our 2020 new business of the year. Kim Jackson received our 2020 Community Leader of the Year and Marianne Adams. Adams representing, representing Zami Nobla, which was our 2020 nonprofit of the year. Hey, everyone, we are so glad to have you. It's great to be here. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Absolutely. Kia, I, I know you've got them questions. So I'm going to kick it to you first. Oop, and I'm going to unmute you. We've got right. the Zoom mute monster. Yeah. I mean, um, with with the current times, I just feel like I need to ask Mr. Justin Culliver, uh, our tech guy, are you creating an app to replace Robin Hood and can I get in on it? That is my real question. Justin, are you saving us? I want to help. Uh, you and I are going to talk right after this and get started <laughs> on that. I tell you what, I wish I did have that uh, going on right now. I wish that was in flight and I wish I had invested in Zoom. <laughs> Absolutely. Touche, touche. Um, actually, I, I would rather you start off on the questions because I'm going to be silly for a second. So you take the reins, Chris. Absolutely. So, you know, it. as we are meeting here, we're at the end of our first month of January. So much has happened over the past few months in the past year, of course. Um, I was just, and we've got a photo here a little bit later in the presentation. A year ago, we were at Coca-Cola's headquarters for our 2020 kickoff with about 200 plus folks in the room. We were so optimistic about the year ahead. I think everyone was, of course, about a year ago at this time. Um, you know, Kim, I'm gonna kick it over to you first. As, as representing Georgia and our first LGBTQ plus Georgia State Senator, what are you seeing as like, the important aspects and lessons learned from 2020 as you're moving into 2021 as our newest Georgia State Senator. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you all so much for having me. It's, it's so good. Kia, always great to see you and you rock a great hat, man. Um, <laughs> But, you know, so the fact that we are still able to be together here um, and yet safe is, I think, an incredible learning that we have come to. Um, I, while I was campaigning, a significant portion of my campaigning was simply teaching people um, how to use Zoom and how to connect. So I talked to grandparents who were like, now I can talk and see my kids on Zoom, right? Um, and now our conversations, I feel like, have broadened so much more. Because when we are on Zoom, you know, we're not having to have people fly here. I mean, I, I was on a Zoom the other day and there were people who lived in Amsterdam on it, Australia on it, right? People from all over the world literally were able to have a conversation with us. And I think that we're better when we're able to expand our diversity, right? And that's geographical diversity too. So I think that's a huge lesson that we learned from 2020 that I hope we carry on into 2020. And then, can I just add the last thing? Um, y'all, can, can I be partisan here? I don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and be partisan. You know, y'all, we did that thing in November and then again in January. Y'all, we did that thing. So what we learned in 2020 is that Georgia can be blue. And I think that's the greatest lesson that we could have taught anybody in 2020. Absolutely, Kim. I, it was so inspiring to see all the work from Georgia Quality, Fair Fight, and all the grassroots organizers that showed up in force to empower Georgians, especially those who don't always have folks in their corner, um, to get out the vote and to really engage in, in, in civics and to learn about government and how they can activate their voice. I was so proud of that. Mary Ann, as a nonprofit executive leader of an incredible organization, Zami Nobla, what are you taking from 2020 into 21, especially from that nonprofit perspective? Because I can imagine that, you know, there are fundraising that's been, that's been hit hard by, you know, by the pandemic and folks are really hesitant perhaps about where they're spending their money and they're wanting to learn more about the organizations and, and what they're doing to serve the community. As executive director, how are you moving Zami Nobla into 2021? 
Thank you, uh, Chris, for inviting me and thank you to Al Georgia. Uh, you know, with that question, I'm reminded of a quote from one of my favorite poets, Gwendolyn Brooks. Uh, and she said that we are each other's business. Uh, we are each other's harvest. We are each other's magnitude and bond. In short, uh, we are responsible for nurturing each other. And that's what I'm taking into 2021. You know, as I look uh, at this screen, there are a lot of people that we have leaned on, who've leaned on us. And so in short, you know, we are interdependent. Uh, and the only way that we've been able to make it out of 2020 is depending and relying on each other, leveraging resources, uh, just sharing, you know, words of encouragement. Um, right now, you know, we've been working with ARP. We're working with Out on Film now. We're putting on a, a Black Lesbian Film Festival. They've been doing this for 30 years. This is our first one. We know nothing. They know everything. So to be able to call up Jim Farmer and say, hey, we need some help. And for him to say, we got you, Marianne. I mean, that's just amazing. And it happens in a place like Atlanta. You know, for me to be able to call Kim Jackson and say, you know, we got some elders here and they haven't gotten their absentee ballot. What do we need to do about this, you know what I mean? Um, and for us to be able to, you know, reach out to Atlanta Pride and to be able to leverage the resources that they have to continue to do our work is absolutely paramount. I think, you know, nonprofits certainly feel the gap. Uh, and there are people who work in corporate America who want to be able to give to nonprofits. They give their money. There are people who don't have money and they give their time. And some people give it all and we need all of it. And so that's what I'm taking into 2020, you know, to, to not be rigid, to be flexible, to be open to change, to be a, open to going wherever the need is and just meeting people where they are. Oh, wow. So many Beautiful nuggets of, of wisdom and information there and um, being flexible, nurturing and collaborating with each other. My goodness, I, I absolutely agree. We learned so much about that um, and what we're capable of when we do take the time to listen to each other and take the time to ask how we can help perhaps. So thank you so much, Marianne. Justin, I, I, had, a, I had a question for you before I turn it back over to Kia. Um, you know, from the from the tech perspective, as well as you know, being outside of Metro Atlanta, I know you've got roots out in Columbus um, and have a have a great network outside of Metro Atlanta. What are you taking from a maybe that entrepreneurial spirit, but also seeing what's happening outside of Metro um, and folks being activated as we're heading into 2021? How how what's 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 on your brain right now? Well, I'll tell you, I saw 2020 as a masterclass in uh, adapting to change for business owners like myself. And really, I see a lot, a lot of head nods. I think we all yeah. went through that, uh, where we began 2020 with a pandemic thinking we'll ride this out like, a, like it's a hurricane coming on shore. As long as we hunker down for a couple of weeks, it'll subside, right? And it didn't. So what we saw was uh, the businesses that adapted to the change uh, survived it and in a many ways created new ways to connect with their customers, to connect with each other in their business communities and, and other communities. Uh, Zoom was a great example of that. I know many of us are suffering from Zoom fatigue, but for those of us who aren't in Metro Atlanta, it's been a, an incredible tool to level the playing field. Um, when I lived in Atlanta, which wasn't that long ago, I would spend hours in the car going from downtown to Alpharetta and everything in between trying to make it to meetings. Now with Zoom, I've more than doubled the number of meetings that I'm having in a, any given day. And I just take five minutes in between meetings to grab a glass of water. So it's really actually in some ways helped my business. I, 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 would, you know, I would prefer that the pandemic didn't happen, but when we look at how business has evolved and how we can adapt to change and leverage the tools that are in our, in our uh, capability to use, it can actually you know, serve as an advantage to make more connections, more meaningful connections. I love what Kim said earlier about the diversity in conversations, not just on topics, but geographies. You know, It's just so easy to make those connections now. And I tell you, I think that the other lesson from 2020 is for us to not let our guard down towards the holiday season, around Thanksgiving to Christmas, I think we all had election fatigue. We had pandemic fatigue. 
people started traveling, people started letting their guard down, and that's when the COVID cases spiked. And that began affecting everyone's business and everyone's families and friends. And so I think the thing that we all need to take from 2020 is to um, adapt to change and keep our guard up, especially for 2021. There's a lot of uncertainty ahead of us. And I think we need to be thinking about continuity of business and how to protect ourselves and keep our businesses functioning. Okay. And, and, and that I love everything that you said, uh, especially about continuity. And I, I know you mentioned adapting and surviving to these constant changes that seem to come along with uh, the pandemic and the elections. But I really want to take it like a step further and get to thriving because I genuinely would love to understand like what is your approach to uh, seeing what happened with Robin Hood, seeing what happened with Reddit and how people, the people were able to come together. How do we as a community like harness the power of the people because we are capable of, of changing and addressing anything e even if you look at um, the way the riot started or Q, all of those things that was social media. So like, what's your approach? How do you feel like we could do it better? Um, how, what are some good examples that you could give us maybe? And, and how could we help? How can we help make sure that we're using uh, this ability to connect with people from all over the world, maybe who don't look like us or don't love like us? Like what can we do to make things better? Key, is that one for me or? That one's for you and that was for the whole panel. Awesome, awesome. So my two cents on that is uh, really to go into 2021 with um, a full stock of empathy when it comes to people that you're working with, the clients that you're serving, uh, the people that work with you and work for you. Uh, bring empathy to the table in every conversation to understand what might be troubling them. What problems can you help solve? Um, don't, you know, don't look for folks to solve all of your problems. Think about how you can solve someone else's problems. I'll give a great example. Uh, so many of my friends are teachers and teachers are feeling it right now. And I challenge myself with my business, being in the technology field, thinking every day, what can I do to potentially make their day in and day out that much better? Because they're exhausted. They're now doing in-person classroom teaching. They're doing virtual teaching and, you know, lesson planning it's just like having two jobs in one. So I think just think about the people you engage with day in and day out and what can you do to help make their lives better? And good goes around. We all know that good goes around. And so I think if you take that approach, you'll see that it, it's fulfilling both personally and from a business perspective. Agreed. How about you, Kim? What do you think? Um, especially when we talk about, you, you know, you just won your election. How did you harness the power of the people? And how can we continue to do that and, and help make the world a better place? Just like you said, be more considerate of others. I think Kim might be muted. Or Mary. Thank you. I couldn't, I, I can't unmute myself. There's a Zoom czar who's bigger than me out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so I, I think that the power of the people, yes, we're seeing that with GameSock and with, with Reddit, and that's been really incredible. Um, but I want to bring us back to, you know, this summer in 2020, we saw the power of the people when they got out on the streets and really fought for racial justice, right? Um, it started with a video that was tragic and awful and horrible that the world stopped to watch, right? And then the people, Black, white, Latinx, all of us, Asian, like we got out on the streets and we be and justice. And for me, that was incredibly encouraging. And I hope that we carry that same zeal and passion into 2021 to continue to demand racial justice. And, you know, as I look at you all as business owners and business leaders, like, I hope that you start right at home with your own businesses to make sure you're doing the work, not just to look out for us as those of us who love the same way, not just the LGBTQ plus family, but to also make sure that you're thinking about things around equity in terms of race and gender, um, because those things really matter. And you can start with your own business as we continue to spread out, right? Uh, and then the last thing I wanna say is that my election showed that the South, that Georgia 
we are ready to be the progressive place that so many who are not from Georgia don't believe is possible, right? I live in a majority African-American, extraordinarily religious district, and they voted for me overwhelmingly, 80%. So please be encouraged. Georgia is not the back woods that people talk about it being. That's not who we are. Um, we are an incredibly diverse place where we are ready to have leaders who look like us, who reflect different ideals and characteristics. And so please continue to encourage that. And I'm a preacher, so really, really, I get two last things. Finally, if anybody on this call is thinking about ever running for office, I am the only LGBTQ plus person in the Senate don't let me be here by myself for long. Come on, I need some friends, please. <laughs> Kia, come on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what? Hey. And moving on to Mary. <laughs> uh, Maybe one day, one day, one day. Well, you know, I think it's important to find out what people need and want as opposed to making those assumptions that we know. And a really good example of that is this in past summer in 2020, we were putting on webinars and workshops and, uh, you know, we're doing COVID research with University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And, and folks came to us and said, you know, you all are too serious. This is, we don't need all of this. It's already difficult, and, you know, and so we need some laughter. We need some comedy. You know, we need some, 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 some levity. And we were like, oh, we thought we were giving you what you wanted. Well, no, you're not. We want something different. And so, you know, we have to listen to that. So you you, you have to listen to folks. And so we pivot. And, you know, for the, all the entire month of, of August, we had a comedy show. We had a DJ battle. We had an art show. We had a cocktail show. I mean, we did that. People were like, yeah, yeah, this is what we're talking about. This is what we want. So I, I think we need to listen and ask people what they need and what they want. And I think we also need to reframe power. There's so many of us who don't believe we have power. We don't, we, we're not intimately uh, 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 familiar with that word and, and certainly not that whole construct. So I think that, you know, sometimes people feel like if they're not out on the street, then they're not, you know, being activists and they're not having their fist up. But, you know, activism looks all kinds of ways. You know, it's writing your, your, your elected official. Uh, you know, it, it, it's advocating, it, 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 it's lobbying, it's just taking somebody to vote. I mean, all of that's important. So I think that we need to expand the whole definition of what we mean by power. And first of all, start having those conversations conversations and letting people know that you do, you can build power, you know, and power is in you and we need to spread it out. So I think we need to really start, you know, including people as opposed to excluding people when it comes to activism and when it comes to power and just reframing what that looks like and what it means. Wow. That's so excellent. I, I just thought of uh, the Bring Your Booty to the Polls campaign. That was a huge success mm -hmm. and for a lot of yes. great reasons. But yes, people do want something different. And uh, that's one of the great things that I think about, like being so connected now with social media. It shows the diversity and uniqueness of everyone. So no, no one gets to set a standard of normal anymore. And you kind of get to like check the crowd and see what it is that they're looking for and communicate to people where they already are. So that like, that's so excellent. I don't think I've, uh, the busiest moments in my career are election season because it's constant, constant, because like, this is how people learn. This is how so many people take it in. So again, I'm excited to be here. I was uh, really surprised when it was the, op the opportunity to host but it's perfect because I love having these conversations with you all and um, sharing each other's audiences. And I learned so much from you guys. And, and trust me when I say I'm taking notes and, and bringing it back because I will definitely convey that message of it's not just being out there with a poster. You can write your senator and let me know when you want to get people together and we can do just that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, this is this is such an inspiring conversation, and I think it's spot on with what we need as we're as we're really thinking about how we're we're tackling the rest of the year and, and what are we going to do to be introspective and take a look at ourselves, take a look at our our households, our communities, our businesses, and how we can drive 
meaningful impact and not just, you know, posting a statement and not just, you know, the black square and Instagram, but what are we really doing to get involved in our community and to think about how we are showing up for each other, um, as all of our panelists have mentioned. So as, as we close this out, I want to pass it around the horn, how, um, to all of our panelists, how can we learn more about you and your organization? Um, how can we support you? So I'm gonna start with Marianne and I'm gonna move it to Justin, Kim, and I'll kick it back over to Kia. Marianne, how can we learn more about you and Zami Noble and support y'all? Uh, you can certainly visit our website at www.zaminoble.org. You can visit any of our many social media platforms. We probably have a 50 million Facebook groups and pages and, and all of that. Um, and you can know you can certainly do it the old-fashioned way. You can call us up and have a conversation. We'd love that. You know, we we are about continuing to build relationships. And, and I think that one thing with COVID-19, people have had to stop and you and look at who's around us. You know, who are people we've been passing, you know, in the night over these years. And the one thing I love about Atlanta is there's so much work to do. I always tell people, come down here. We got tons and tons of social justice work to do. And the entree is easy. Come on down. You know, and so when people leave here, they always come back because it's a place that grabs at your heart. And it's a place where, uh, you know, we all know each other. We work together and we, we got each other's back. So uh, certainly, you know, get to know Zami Nobla. Call me up. Let's have a conversation. And some virtual tea. Yes. Thank you so much, Marianne. Did Justin. you drop the number in the chat? Make sure yeah. you drop the number in the chat. We I'll drop the right. number in the chat. Uh, all, right. all right. Justin, how do we learn more and, and uh, support you and, and your organizations? Thank you, Chris. You can check us out online at glasshouseguide.com. That is a real estate focused technology product that my team designed and built from scratch. Uh, and it's been a wild ride to start that during the year of the pandemic, but we're making good traction. We have clients in the U.S. and Canada. Um, but beyond that, I and my team, for years, we've designed and developed emerging technologies for a variety of companies and industries. So always feel free to reach out. Um, my LinkedIn profile is linked in the chat. I'll put it out there again. Um, but I think there's an assumption. I want to mention this. There's an assumption among many small business owners and uh, nonprofit organizations that high tech is out of reach and it's going to be expensive and challenging. And that is just no longer the case. Case in point, uh, we're helping a small clinic out where we live stand up an online scheduling portal for uh, the COVID vaccine because their phones were ringing off the hook and they didn't have enough time in the day. So I would just say, if you ever have technology on, on your brain and you want to talk it out, give me a call, drop me an email. Let's hop on Zoom and chat about it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Justin. And I know I dropped the Glasshouse Guide website as well as Zamily Noble's website in the chat, but please feel free to share even more information. Kim, our Georgia State Senator, how do we keep in contact and support you? Absolutely. So first of all, you can follow me on social media at Kim for Georgia. Um, that's on all of the social media platforms. And my website is also KimForGeorgia.com. But um, please know you have a friend in the Senate. And so if there's everything, ever anything that you need or you wanna talk about as it relates to Georgia state politics, um, know that you can call me. I don't know my office number, but it's on the website for the <laughs> state Senate. <laughs> it's listed there. And I actually do answer the phone when I'm there and, and I'll, I'll call you back, but please know um, for the first time ever, you don't just have a friend, you have someone who loves like you, um, who's a part of your community in the Senate. And so I'm, I'm ready to be here to help you all along the way and to represent our community in a way that it's never been presented before. Awesome. Thank you so much um, to our panelists. Um, you're, you are free to uh, go about the rest of your evening. Join us here for the rest of uh, our wow. shindig. We're going to get our networking on. Uh, but thank you so much to Kim, Justin, and Marianne. It's an honor uh, to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, Kim I, can't, I have my ear to the ground, and I cannot let you go without asking this question. I know we have time constraints. Two questions. You can okay. ask them however you would like. So I know you all voted on the budget today. 
Uh, did you vote on anything specifically that would help small businesses? And are you working towards sponsoring any legislation that will specifically help um, small businesses, especially LGBTQ small businesses in Atlanta? I'm sorry. I know the time constraints. Give us no, like no, 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 no. Uh, seconds. So Great. real quick, uh, the House voted on the bill on the budget um, today that hasn't gotten to the Senate. Um, but there are some things in there for small businesses. It's not as much as we wish, um, but we do care. Georgia businesses that um, and yes we are working to a lot of it is just making sure that federal dollars actually get to you all um, they're federal dollars come into Georgia and um, so I'm working actively with other legislators to make sure that the dollars get to the people who need it which are, are small business owners so yes and yes great to see you Kia Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim. Awesome. Awesome. Final question as well, Kia. Thank you so much. Um, Kia, I know we're going to go through, I'm going to invite um, our board president, Michael Daniels on. Um, if you hang tight for a little bit and help us get into our networking portion in about 15 minutes, if that works, um, stand by. But before, before we go into our board president and a little bit of an update, how do we learn more about Kia Barnes, aka Kia Comedy? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, definitely the website, kiabarnes.com. Um, I'm always trying to do something. Um, so you can support me there. You can so support me on social media as Kia Comedy. I do stand-up comedy. I also produce a nationally touring uh, lesbian and androgynous fashion show, um, music showcases, poetry, um, really just trying to create queer safe spaces. So you can find me all across Atlanta because we're not going anywhere else right now. And thank you guys so much for having me awesome. and letting me pontificate. I appreciate you no, all. It is, it is such an honor. And um, like I mentioned earlier, this is our first time doing anything officially together with Kia and the Outdoor to Business Alliance, but this is certainly not gonna be the last time. We're, we're so excited for building this relationship and, and really tapping into you as a, an incredible leader in our community. 